so we learned about how to uh, contribute to the you know uh, how to identify the various stakeholders and how to interpret an RSC matrix we learned how to contribute to the overall project plan from a requirements activities point of view then we looked at uh, you know the ways to manage the scope the couple of things that we still have to cover which is traceability and change management okay so today's session we will uh, cover both of them and also look at uh, you know risk management as well so let's uh, understand what traceability is and uh, also we will we'll understand about uh, change management so for small projects let's say there are some 10 requirements you know it's easier to track them and, and ensure that your final product has is delivering all your 10 features but what if there are some hundreds of requirements? Okay, there are some hundred requirement, hundred uh, features which which are necessary, right? So they do have some hundred features, and you are expected to deliver the system. So the application final uh, test system, right? Has to ha has to deliver all those hundred features. Right? So that is what uh, is a commitment, right? So whatever is there in the SLM. Now, in between, there are multiple uh, phases and deliverables. Like, you know, there is a PA delivering a BRD. Okay. And then there is a technical architect delivering the design documents. Then you have the developers or programmers who are actually writing the code dot executables. Right? Then you you have the testing team or the QA team who would actually test these uh, executables. Right? So the tested executables have to be done. Uh, tested uh, system has to be delivered and finally operations operations team has to get this hundred features delivered in their final system right now what if one of these guys miss out a few requirements right so maybe I as a business analyst when I am capturing the requirements I miss out a couple of them so only 98 I have uh, you know delivered okay so, what would happen to the two features? That would definitely not come in because if you not capture the requirements, the architect would not, uh, you know, uh, design for those features. The programmers would not code for it. So all those, uh, you know, it, it will get missed up. Similarly, let's say out of these 98, maybe you know your architect also missed out one, so it becomes 97, right? And then your developer missed out another three. So it became 94, right? And finally, whether your testers might have missed one uh, one more uh, requirement, he might not tested it. So you're delivering it without testing. So 93 features were finally delivered. Seven are missing out, right? So what happens to these seven, right? Now, it's a bad situation to be in when you are going to the customer. The customer would ask during the UAT, what happened to these seven features? Right? Then you have to go back and then start all over the process again. So you pick up these two additional requirements and this guy has to look at all those 100 and then see which one was missed out and add that additional feature for the design uh, in the design documents. Right? So you'll have to pack up, you know, uh, make up for all those losses and then, uh, you know, uh, rework on, on all this. So it's a lot of waste of time which you're doing. Right? So to avoid this situation, if you could have actually made sure that at each of these phases, you have a checkpoint, right? At each of these phases, if you can see, you know, 100 features were there. Does your BRD consist of 100, 100 requirements? If yes, then move on to the next phase. So then once the design documents are there, did you design for all the 100 requirements? Yes, then you move on. 
then the once the code is done then you will check whether all those 100 features are, are, are done then you will move on so you, you are putting your checkpoint you are saying that okay you know only up uh, I, I'll, I'll track them I'll trace them and ensure that each and every guy is 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 not missing out anything right so this way I, I will not come to the situation wherein I'll miss some requirements okay so what are we doing we are we are tracing our requirements we are tracing our you know features or scope or requirements right from the start of the project till the till the time it's delivered okay at each of the end of the, each of those phases you are having a checkpoint and then filling up this document called as traceability matrix okay now the traceability matrix is nothing but a, a, a excel sheet or, or a word document with all these details like you have the various teams and then it has all the functionalities the hundred features will be listed in it and then you'll mark it yes or no if it's done then you'll mark it yes 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 you have to make sure that all of them are, are translated to the next so obviously it's a giant exercise so you will contribute during the requirements phase the architect will fill in during after the design is completed the develop the tech lead would fill in after the you know programming is completed the test guy would uh, the QA guy would fill in after the testing is completed right so that way you can be pretty much sure that when you are delivering this to the customer for testing he is getting 100 percent uh, requirements without missing out any okay yeah so a traceability matrix looks something like this right so you have all the features or, or the you know the list of uh, requirements given by the customer usually this is taken from the SOW right SOW would have agreed upon some features if you consider our mobile banking application maybe we agreed for these six features now usually for small systems it, you know it's not it's no big deal so we can you know remember all those ten features or, or six features right uh, you know at, at, at the top of our mind right but you know the the issue comes in when there are too many features like there are some hundred or fifty uh, you know features it's difficult to track them so you would list down each of each of those features that you have agreed to commit in the SOW right and then map them to the requirements that you have captured right so each one of them you would have captured in a uh, you know in a detailed requirement usually we use use cases for capturing the requirement so I'm just referring the use case number I don't need to write the detailed requirement here so I'm saying that you know this check account balance functionality is covered in use case 001 okay and transferring of funds is covered in use case 002, 3 and 4 okay so the first four use cases cover these two requirements right so I'm doing that one-on-one -on -one mapping so this way I'll be sure that I'll be sure that you know all my six features right the six features I have agreed into the system have been covered by these eight use cases okay a very simple step right so we need to understand the logic of why we are doing it then it becomes easy right so don't get uh, confused by those uh, you know uh, all those uh, complex terms like you know traceability and all traceability is nothing but see if, if you understand the word traceability so that that means you're tracing your requirements right so tracing it right from your SOW till the point it is delivered into your uh, finance system right so you would fill in this since you own the functional requirements you would map these requirements to the use cases and then say you know what I have captured the requirements of all the six features and out of this there are eight requirements or eight use cases which have come in okay so this mapping is done so you can be pretty much sure that all your requirements are converted into your requirements document now what you would do is you'll you'll pass it on to the architect architect would design the system there would be two levels of design high level and low level design right so he will have to map those design documents to your requirements use case 001 is addressed in which which uh, you know design document he has to map it right just for the sake of it let's call it as a component diagram and a class diagram but uh, these are the, not the actual way they would be doing it 
maybe you know they would, they would actually map it to a different thing but yeah just as a reference i'm telling you right so the the use case is converted into a design document okay this is filled in by the architect then based on these design documents the programs have to be written so you you link it to the program and then say you know this program is uh, you know uh, meeting this design document so effectively this balance dot java program is meeting your requirement of check accounts dot uh, check account balance uh, requirement from the customer right so you are tracking it till it's delivered and and even tested into your system right so you are saying that test case 001 and 002 would actually uh, you know test this application or functionality okay so this way we have uh, an an finally tested application or requirement moving into the uh, production environment okay so this increase ensures that all the features that we have we have uh, you know committed to are delivered in your final system clear about this any questions what do you mean by use case raju so use case is a way to capture our requirement that's one of the ways most popular ways in which you capture the requirement so we will learn that later right Oh. now uh, so in our brd we will elaborate each of these requirements right so like you know check account balance would be elaborated right. then each of the functions have uh, the you know functionality is what you have captured in your research so it has to be clearly elaborated like how does the screen look like what is the process flow and or what how do you handle the exceptions deviations all that needs to be explained so use case is one of the main uh, ways of capturing the requirement right so this way what i'm what we are doing is this require this high level feature has been converted into our final requirement so that is what we have uh, mentioned here okay and who prepares this document raju it's a giant exercise it's see uh, like i said it's it's uh, handled by the business analyst the architect the the tech leads or you know um, or, or the developers and finally the testing team as well so it's a giant excel whenever you are handling each of those phases uh, you know they have to fill in these documents and then pass it on to the next team otherwise so you not be sure the document so it will generally be done by the business analyst right? okay. because you know you you are the first person who is uh, acting on those documents so that's that's a first part of traceability what we have looked at is actually called as a vertical trace thanks for watching the video Please like, comment and subscribe for more updates.